After the 4-0 defeat to Haverford West last weekend, is there anything in particular you'll be looking to work on in training this week ahead of Pontypool on Saturday? Yeah, so like in every game, we'll rewatch the footage um, after and we'll pinpoint areas where we've done well and areas where we need to improve, kind of based around our, our principles that we, we build, say our playing style off. Um, obviously Saturday, um, we as a collective, the lads and the coaching staff, we were disappointed in, in how we play, uh, how we played and we know there's a lot to unpack from that, but as well, you've got to consider uh, after a 4-0 defeat, you, you, you've got to be, um, you've, you've got to be conscious of what you choose as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll pick some parts and we'll, some areas that we know we slip below our standards and we know for the difficult game coming on Saturday that we'll, we'll have to improve upon and, and meet those standards. Excellent, mate. Uh, Ponty Pred are unbeaten in phase two with three wins and two draws, as I'm sure you know. Um, do you think you're capable of causing the problems at the weekend? Yeah, well, um, the, the opposition on Saturday, they had a, I think they had a really good transfer window in January and they really strengthened all over the pitch. Um, Tom Davis at left wing back and obviously they brought the new goalkeeper in. So they'll be tough opposition, but um, like in every game, even the ones where we've, we've been beaten heavily, there's been a moments of the game where we, we've posed problems but it's just about putting out on a consistent basis throughout the 90 minutes so for example the Flint game two two weeks ago we felt other than that spell after the half-time interval that we were pretty strong throughout the match and it's about reaching those standards again in terms of the, the how we want to play and in terms of the energy intensity which is going to bring those performances and bring the results at the end of the day it's about it's about uh, executing that and yeah. if we're able to do that then that's when we we cause any opposition problems whether it's a team in the bottom six or before the split whether it was a team in in the top six yeah brilliant uh, what positives could you take from the defeat at Hufford West last weekend was there any positives you could see in the 90 minutes um obviously um it was it was difficult with the scoreline initially reflecting on it because getting beat 4-0 is yeah. it's not acceptable. And we all spoke about that after the game. In terms of positives, yeah, there may be some individual parts of players' games. For example, Tyler Mack came yeah. on at half-time and for a young lad to get so many minutes in, the, in this league, it, it's valuable. So in terms of the younger players picking up more minutes for their development, that's key. And obviously, Caden Cook, Bright, bright future ahead of him. A really exciting player. He came on towards the end of the game. We also have other younger players in the squad as well where it's about using these moments to, to build them and help them in their development. Mm. Uh, between now and the end of the season, sort of looking ahead for the next the last five games, although both would be nice, do you think the performances and results are more important for Airbus when it comes to the end of the season? Um, looking ahead to next yeah, season as well. Yeah, to be honest, I think where we are then, it's results. It yeah. is a results-based business, mm. and in the long term, you have to to execute consistently good performances because that will bring uh, results. But obviously, with the context of our situation, um, we've got a bit of a monkey on our back of not um, of our points total, and we have our own targets, um, which will probably be clear to everyone else. And I've helped with five games to go. We have to have to achieve that and that's to, to, to win a game this season. Um, yeah. Obviously to reach those positive results you have to um, perform well and like I said tonight and on Thursday that's the work we put on the training pitch will we'll go down to helping that. Mm. Uh, during phase two and since the confirmation of relegation has there been an eye looking ahead to next season? Has there been any sort of you know are you focus on the next game or is it a case of looking ahead to what you can do next season and come straight back up? Yeah, well, um, there's always different things you have to uh, acknowledge. So, for example, like I said before, the young players and their development, you focus on maybe their long-term development plans and how their integration into the first team will help them. And any team, uh, every team in our league will always be looking towards next season for recruitment, whether it's us, yeah. whether it's TNS knowing that we'll be in um, the division below next year, then obviously that's going to impact kind of 
the, the leagues we look to sign players and who we can bring in. So, I mean, the conversations are always going on between our coaching staff um, about next season. In terms of recruitment, in terms of young players' development, because you can't stay still in football, you've always got to be looking ahead and planning and being proactive.